I'm excited to announce that we are now on Patreon. So check us out at patreon.com forward slash the stream of David. I am thrilled to be here with one of my favorite people. I say that about a handful of people, but it really is just a handful. Uh, Andrea St. Amon, evidential psychic medium, Andrea St. Amon. And we are airing this in the new year, but we recorded this back at the beginning of November. So she's just coming off a very busy Halloween season, but we have a whole other set of things that we want to talk about. And we're going to dive into the value of fear. How are you, Andrea? Oh, I'm great. And this is one of my favorite topics. So certainly coming out of spooky season, I think the whole reason that we have spooky season, which is, you know, October coming of fall, the, the resolution, the dying of summer, going into all saints and all souls, like this whole season is for us to tiptoe into fear in a very safe environment. So what is our dark side? What is our, what's kind of lurking and how can we play with it? How can we play with what's our shadow that's wanting to come forward and fear is the thing that yeah i wanted to talk about today it's a cool topic because we we talk about systematically detuning fear and judgment all the time and sometimes people think that means that we're going to get to this constant state of fearlessness and fear and judgment in ego and all of these things have their place in humanity and play a role in our human experience. So when we speak about detuning them, we are talking more about them not being dominant drivers all the time in our lives, the way that society tends to teach us to, to allow that to be. But I, I love circling back to this and with a wonderful reminder that there is value in all experiences, including the experience of fear. You're not going to solve it and eradicate it and never feel fear again. In fact, people that say they're completely 100% fearless, well, A, they're full of shit when they say that, we know that, but B, that's a state of fear right there when they think they have to act like they're fearless, right? Yeah, and what you just brought up was the distinction between internal fear and external fear. There's two different things. So external fear is maybe what society is perpetuating you know, there's this on the news, or there's a tiger standing outside your cave, which actually, if there's a tiger standing outside your cage, that's a legitimate fear. Yeah, stay inside. Um, (laughs) Um, And then there's internal fear, which is really what I'm being drawn to and what I think spooky season is all about. And what I think the new year is all about, like, how are we going to get Um, through our internal fears in order to grow? Because our internal fears are the ones that are legitimate in the sense that we can use them we can use that energy but like you just said we don't have to let it control us um so something came up recently that i just thought like using fear to feel your edges and this is in your own experience using fear to feel your edges leads you to courage and if you can think of a battery there's you know, one end of the battery and the other end of the battery and fear is at one end. If you can use that as a battery, it's going to bring you courage through an experience, through, through growing through your own internal processes. And that might mean looking at societal issues or your own life or what's going on in the world, or just even your own emotional state if you can work through it, use the fear to work through it into courage, you're going to grow. I love that because we, we were talking before we went on. We always have the best conversation before I hit record. <laughs> Just talking about what we're going to talk about, right? And I was talking about being out in the wilderness. That it, for people that, that practice Thai or listen all the time, we, we talk about having a vibrational spin out where you create this prolonged vibrational period for yourself, this downturn in your life in some way, a health spin out, a financial spin out, a relationship spin out, whatever it is. And recently I've been describing for myself and my practice, that spin out period is sort of like you're out in the wilderness and you can do two things when you're out in the wilderness, you can fear it and judge it. I shouldn't be out here. What's next? Oh my gosh. I don't know where I'm going here. Uh, I'm scared. There's fear here. 
or you can just allow those emotions to sort of flow and, and meet them, like you said, meet them and really entrust and entrusting the universal process of creation and trusting that there's value in that time that you're spending in the wilderness, in that time of, of unclarity. I have found for myself that when I sit there, even when fear bubbles up, even when judgment starts to creep in a little bit, usually that kind of trails fear, right? That if I sit with it and just appreciate it and trust the process, that so many amazing gifts are then revealed. That's I level up. That's always a period for me right before I level up in some way. I think even actually being in the wilderness, you're already leveled up from the last time you were in the wilderness, right? You're in a new wilderness. Yeah. Every time I experience the wilderness, it's different. It's better. <laughs> it's, it's less terrifying for sure. It, it, it goes from, uh, you know, when you're in the wilderness, oh my gosh, what's going to happen next? I'm terrified. I need to take action. And you start hammering away at something and usually get very frustrated and realize it's not working very well until you have to just stop and step away from it and take a break. And when you take the break, then things start churning again for you. Whatever it is, it works on all topics. Do you feel inclined to share any specifics about your wilderness? Because I would like to share where I just was. Well, you're the I guest. Will. Do you want to share yours first or do you want me to go first? Either one. Well, I'll, I'll go first just to set it up. And so for my wilderness there, again, we're airing this in, in early 2022. There was a period in the middle of 2021. I have to say, 2021 was an amazing year for the Taya practice, for the stream, the business, all of that stuff. More people through boot camp than ever before, more dollars rolling in, more fun. We started uh, developing a coaching program for our graduates where they are becoming coaches and actually are going to take over and coach boot camp all over the world and in different ways, which is really exciting to level up in that way. And in my desiring to allow this continual unfolding that was already in progress, right? The universe was already delivering it to me. I decided to pick up my hammer and start making it happen in a bigger way. And I brought in all this marketing thinking, mm -hmm. gosh, marketing is the path to really expanding this message and getting it out there to more people. And it could be. And I brought, I went out and hired what I thought was the best of the best and invested a lot of money and brought in all this marketing. And I sort of found myself, I, I was very busy. I went right back into my old type A ways. Oh, I yeah. started all these training programs, yeah. we started creating all these positions, uh, all these legal documents. And we went right into business mode from what you not, know. And, we, and yeah. we've never, and I knew that very well because I was in that world for 25 years. Right. Yep. And I brought all that in all that corporate stuff. And we, we started becoming very corporate and, <laughs> and, and somebody came in that was, you know, they're all bootcamp graduates. And she came in and she started working as a coach. She says, why are we allowed to swear in the thread? Why is there, I'm like, oh yeah, well, that's just kind of a thing in the United States. She's outside the United States. You know, in the United States, we just keep the language clean because people get offended. And then you have all these problems to deal with. And if we just don't go there, blah, blah, blah. And Fuck then I, that, I realized David. I was, Fuck that. I know Sorry. I was just going <laughs> down. Well, and, and God knows I, I cuss like a sailor, you know, I do. And, but I learned not to do it in a corporate environment because yeah, I that would of get course. Me in trouble, right? Right. So, but what, what's the root of all that? The root of all that is fear. I'm mm -hmm. fearing that someone's going to sue me because someone uses the F word at a meeting and where, you know, it's, yeah. it's very fear driven. I don't think anyone right. in the entire world is going to be harassing people or anything like that. Right. So I should even be concerned about that. So anyway, I'm, I'm bringing all this marketing in and we're doing all these things. And all of a sudden I looked around and realized that I didn't even recognize what I was creating and it didn't even feel like oh. mine anymore. Oh, wow. And the marketing, even though I tried to pull all of the fear and scarcity language out of the marketing. Sure. I think that was probably the meat of the marketing was the fear and scarcity for them. Wow. But to me, it was so inconsistent with, with the, what the stream teaches and Taya to tell to send out a blast email. You've got to get into boot camp right now. The oh. price is going up, or you're going to get a discount on this. And if you don't get into it, your life is going to be a disaster. And 
you know, there was even an ad where uh, it was it was coming from me, but this copywriter wrote it, but they did send it to me. And the copywriter did study hours and hours of, of, you know, podcasts and stuff. And they sent it to me. And there was a sentence in there that says, if you don't do this, I wish you luck. And I was like, oh, "Oh, that feels nasty. I wish you luck. We talk about there's value in all experiences. So if you believe that, and I do, whether someone gets into Taya or the stream or a program of ours or not, they are having their human experience. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Whatever it's a discern preference, right? And that just felt so crappy. I'm like, oh, that just feels gross and nasty. So I took that out. But then we got all the marketing going. And then all of a sudden, our business was worse than ever. <laughs> like, wow, I've spent all this money and time and effort. I was literally working seven days a week. Uh, and I was working passionately for seven days a week. But still, I was hammering away at it, trying so hard and getting into that vibration of need, which we know is not good. That, okay, I've spent all this money now on this marketing. So now I need it to start paying off. That's how you think in business. But we know vibrationally when you need something, you're telling the universe it's not there. And the universe is agreeing. And it's your ego. You're only your ego. Oh, no, it is it. all ego. It was all ego. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, the Facebook group was, was being managed that way. The whole marketing mm-hmm. message was kind of going in that direction. And then all of a sudden we saw more people showing up for meetings, you know, to, to join bootcamp and stuff like that, but they were totally different people. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah. And a I lot mean, I'm of not them surprised, but... were so destroyed if they couldn't get into bootcamp that they were crying oh, and that didn't feel good. No. And so the, 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 the team and I were just talking like, God, it feels nasty to meet with someone about such a high vibrational thing and then have them so destroyed if they weren't ready for it financially or whatever, I've it's never not ready had that. for it. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had that experience in all these years. People just flow in the camp, and it's always worked great. And all of a sudden I'm introducing this marketing with these big expectations and everything ground to a halt. Mm. Well, everything grinding to a halt, I'm far enough along in my practice to where I didn't let it freak me out. I did stop all the marketing. I stopped all of it. Uh, I channeled, uh, I think I did a couple of sessions with Matt. My friend mm-hmm. Matt, who's on here all the time. Yes. And he asked the stream about that. And the stream delivered this beautiful message saying, This is a 5D thing that you've created. Why are you bringing in 3D marketing to market a 5D product, if you will? And they said it brilliantly. And I actually took that clip and I emailed it to the entire list, thousands of people, and I put it on the, the Facebook channel, the Facebook page. And I said, here it is. This is what we've been doing. We yep. went down a weird path. Sorry about that, more or less. Here's what the stream says about it. This is where we're going from there. And then after that message, I really felt like I was in the wilderness. And I oh, was at peace with being in the let wilderness. Me, you were at peace then because I thought it was brilliant. I do remember getting that message now and thinking it was brilliant that you were so transparent about your process. Well, I, I am always, I feel like I'm always very transparent about everything. And again, I've had marketing people say, don't be so transparent. You need to be a guru and you need, people need to see you in a certain way. And, um, you know, I, I think they can see the stream that way. I see the stream that way. I have a lot of reverence for the stream. I think it's the intelligence that created all right. that it is. Right. And I feel like I am a student of that. And I, maybe this is a bit unique in that I'm presenting myself as me, student of the stream and the stream. Right. And those of you that know me and know the stream know that those are two different, very, very right. different uh, right. sets of consciousness, if you will. Yes. But I love sharing because the, the, the places where I mess up, that's where all the gold is, man. That is where all the gold is. When I screw something up, when I step <laughs> in it, when I find myself out in the wilderness, I am now able to fully trust and yes, the fear bubbles up sometimes. Usually the fear, fear bubbles up at 3 a.m. I wake up like, ah, <laughs> payroll, you know, <laughs> and things like that. But then I get, I go meditate and I'm like, oh yeah. You know, it's, it's sort of like when you're in a sleep state and you're not as intentional with your thoughts, you can have all kinds of vibration bubble up. And usually if something bubbles up in a dream or in sleep state, there's a presence of that already. Mm -hmm. That's why it's revealing itself. So that was my big, but it led to my biggest leveling up to date, which is a realization that the Taya practice is for all of humanity, regardless of whether they buy anything or not, who cares about that? The stream's message in the Taya practice 
lifts people out of polarity and allows you to make sense of things that our 3D world says are evil or wrong or shouldn't be, but never gets solved because we're so damn polarized. The Taya practice gives you the tools to lift out of that. Just imagine if the whole world, if all of humanity gravitated toward not being polarized, not being rooted in ego so much, not being uh, terrified, so terrified that they have to pick a side and stay on that side and demonize anything that is in that. And think in terms of politics and religion and right. all these things that right. screw the world up. Right. That's all polarity. Right. And it and, gives you the tools to get out of that. And the beauty of it is, I just want to reiterate, is that we're still here on earth. You can live 3D. And the point is, we are still here on Earth. Yeah, yeah. If I, we, we refer to 5D, but you're right. 5D we're is the reimagining of the Earth experience that we're in. It's not and another planet it. that we're going to float off to that's perfect. No, it's to live it right now, today. Stop buying into what's being fed to you. Yep. Start Current world, current body, current bank account, current relationship, and it's current huge, political it's climate. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, the that's the best news of all that nothing at all has to change for everything to change. No, it, oh, exactly, hundred percent. Yeah, it's just your perspective. That's it. All right. So, what was your what was your wilderness? So my wilderness, and this was a long time coming. I had a I had a big event here in Charleston. It was a public event, which during COVID was a little bit up in the air. Should we even have a public event when this was getting planned? And the event was, uh, I was, it, it was a very fancy place. It was at the Library Society, which is, a, which is a private institution, hallowed halls. I mean, really imagine like the grand halls and the grand piano and the marble and the whole nine yards. And I got, uh, the event was I, I was doing a Dracula event with Dacre Stoker, who is a descendant of Bram Stoker, who wrote the novel Dracula. And a lot of people think of Dracula as just some sort of Hollywood monster, two dimensional. That's not the case at all. It's an enduring literary piece of work that survives today because it's it's a it's a very personal creation, a very beautiful, amazing work of literature. But the fear for me was I was going to stand in these hallowed halls with Dacre Stoker and show up as an evidential psychic medium. And that might sound silly on in this uh, format, but for me, it brought up so much fear. It brought up so much fear to the point where I was really having anxiety attacks from the beginning that, wow, you know what? They think I'm a literary scholar. They know that I'm a former partner in a law firm. They think I'm just going to stand up there and give, you know, I don't know, some literary lecture. But when they find out I'm a psychic medium, they're going to call me and tell me, get off our stage. This is not what we do here. And I didn't give, I mean, I wasn't going to give a reading or anything. What I was giving was a psychic medium's perspective and the historical perspective on how spiritualism and all of psychic and all the channeling, everything that all the spiritual aspect um, of our existence, how it influenced Bram Stoker. He was very, very in tune with that when he created this great work of literature. But I was literally having anxiety attacks. So the first night, and it ended up being a great hit. So this is the thing, two nights, great hit. I'm gonna like, spoiler alert there. <laughs> the executive director of the institution really promoted us. She was so happy that we were gonna have a very spooky, but very intellectual, historically based, grounded kind of presentation to, these, to this audience. The first night I was able to use all that energy, all that anxiety, all that fear, and somehow I got on top of it. And David, I would like your, after this, I would like your perspective on this. I was able to get on, I was able to get on top of it, stand up there and my voice came out clear. And a lot of people might listening to this might understand this when you're really in fear and anxiety. Sometimes when you speak, you can't control your voice. Literally your voice starts shaking and you can't control it. So I thought, <laughs> hopefully I'm gonna stand up there and speak clearly. I did. The second, not, the day after the first night, I collapsed. I had a whole adrenaline crash, collapsed. 
and was exhausted all day. And I thought, huh, I got another night to do, but okay, my anxiety will kick in, my adrenaline kick in, I'll be fine. It didn't. So the second night, I could not get on top of my anxiety. And then the judgment, you just said this earlier, fear turns to judgment of others. Well, the second night was a Friday night. People are coming in late. They're drunk. They're all this. And I'm like in chaos in my head. The show goes on. I can't get, I cannot get on the upside of my anxiety. And so I, what I, I, I just wasn't performing, but guess what? The audience never knew that (laughs) big lesson there. It was very subtle what I was feeling, but I was, but that moment, when you say in the wilderness, that second night of showing up there, when I am my, for whatever reason, all of this anxiety is going through me. I couldn't get on top of it. I still have to perform. And the audience didn't know. And I had more people that night connecting with me and standing in line to meet me afterwards. That was a phenomenal experience where fear somehow moved me into courage because I had to go through it anyway. And it was halfway through a 90 minute presentation before I really found my leg, before I really felt like I was standing and speaking on my own, but it connected. And that's that trust. That's that trust that I am really feeling my edges right now. I'm really going out beyond, I'm in the wilderness and I'm just going to trust that this experience is going to lead me where I need to go. And it did. It connected with more people. It connected with more people. They thought the show was awesome. That's the trust. That's the trust. That's the trust. That's that's why trust, Taya, is trust your abundance. Trust the best possible outcome. So fear is energy. And fear is powerful energy. And you can, can harness the power of that energy and fear can be stifling or exhilarating. And you allowed it because you love what you do so much. Right. You allowed it to be exhilarating. Everything's polarized, right? Everything is polarized. Mm-hmm. Two, there's two sides to every single topic in this polarized world, if you really think about it. So the polarity of fear is I am fearing and I'm going to allow that energy of fear to roll me into exhilaration and harness the power of it and, and do my thing as a professional Or I'm going to allow that fear to completely shut me down. And we feel like crap when we do that. That's We also might feel like crap. We also, I just got to say this to everybody out there listening. You might feel like crap as that, as you're moving into exhilaration, the exhilaration came after the show. (laughs) I think that the trust is the thing. Trust, Trust is such an important word because if you are down, if you're out in the wilderness, whatever that means to you, if you're out in the wilderness and you don't know what's next, you don't know what to do, trusting the process and just going to an intention of best possible outcome, that takes you in that, that direction, moves you in that positive direction of exhilaration. If I'm trusting the universe to deliver the best possible outcome here, even if it's me falling flat on my face and getting booed off the stage, I understand that that's going to lead to something else that's even bigger if I just move through that experience. 100%. You're, you're detuning and the power. You're detuning showing the Showing up. If mm-hmm. I don't have any other two words to say to anybody in January of 2022, it's show up. Because show there's no up. getting it wrong. There's no getting it wrong. Yeah, I can up, spend my whole business out, fear, all of and, that stuff, and know that it's all going to be okay, and then have it all level up feel the fear and do it anyway feel the fear it doesn't mean make reckless decisions it means use all your discernment use everything feel your edges and show up the best you can i literally before we just got on this podcast i got a phone call from hollywood and out of the blue hey can we do the show can we blah 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 blah. and uh can you just give me a quick reading so i know you're legit I have no answer to that, but yes, because I have to show up for spirit. I show up for myself and I'm showing, I'm, mainly I'm showing it for myself, right? I had to show up. And if I had bombed it, who cares? Who cares? My ego cares. My ego clearly cares. Well, I, was, I don't, one of these like, competition shows, show up. there was yeah. a professional, a very well-known, I'm trying to remember exactly who it was and what show it was, but I can't, but it was a really popular pop star 
giving advice to somebody on one of these competition shows saying, you may be messing up in your head, but if you don't quit and you keep going, A, the audience probably won't even notice it. And B, they're going to forget about it because you kept going. True. Uh, and one of the cool things they said, if you ever forget the words to the song, hold the microphone out and let the audience fill in the blanks. And I, <laughs> I thought back to how many concerts I've been to where, you know, Madonna, Beyonce, all these people hold out. And I'm like, now I'm thinking, do they just forget the words? <laughs> what a great uh, trick, though. You know, you forget the words to the song. Suddenly the microphone's out and the audience is giving you the words and then you get right back into it. Or if you mess up a dance move, you mess it up in such a way that you just make it look like that's part of it. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because Cynthia Gregory, who maybe nobody's going to remember here, but she was a very leading ballerina at American Ballet Theater. And some of you might know I was, I used to be a ballerina, but in her retirement, she performed for decades and she did her big gala retirement. And apparently she was so nervous. She was shaky on her leg. And so there was one move that she's done a million times, a million other nights, and she got on her point and it's a beautiful thing. And you could see her ankle shaking. That's the one move that people remember from her because she's such a professional. She just looked at the audience and was like, here, this is where I am right now. I'm shaking on my leg. And she of course pulled it off. But that is that video clip people love and love and love because she allowed herself to be vulnerable. Well, a little bit of humanity works for people. Oh. A little bit and of she humanity works for went, when people put themselves out there as perfect all the time. And I, I am perfection all the time. Uh, humanity kind of likes to take those people down a notch. Yeah. You notice that the people that are really yeah. squeaky clean with a perfect image, usually they're the ones everyone's going after all of a sudden trying to cancel them out or whatever that yeah. people are really bothered by the, the depiction of, of perfection which is sad because everyone wants perfection until they see it. And then all of a sudden they want to find a flaw so that they can be more comfortable with themselves and, and observing. That's, that's, a, that's an ego driven thing as well, but er, everybody has their thing. Everybody has their thing or things for sure. And so, now we live in a, a, in a world where everything is on camera all the time. And right. we see more facets of people than we've ever seen, especially celebrities because they're so right. watched, but we so, expect perfection. Something's coming up that's another facet of what we're talking about because we're looking at January and we, like you said uh, earlier, maybe we were not recording, but we give power to that month of January. The old is going out, the new is coming in. Let me feel my edges. Let me see sure. like how I can expand my wings this year. And to what I see with a lot of clients when I'm doing um, psychic uh, coaching with them a feeling of they can say, I want to spread my wings and I want to do blah, 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 blah. And all the resolution stuff, a sense of deservingness comes up. I don't deserve it. And I do think, and this is just not hitting me. I think that's another aspect of fear. What do you think about that? that yeah. The whole like, idea of deserving deserve or not deserving is a very uh, egocentric thing. Uh, we, we talk in terms of worthiness, that we're all worthy. If we have the ability to desire it, we are worthy of it. And we I can say that too. Yeah, whatever it is. But the idea of I deserve it in a polarized sense, I deserve it can go into that I deserve it and I'm not getting it and I'm a victim and I deserve it and I'm not getting it and I'm a victim. Oh. And that's the, the cycle. Yeah. Or I'm not worthy of it. Therefore, I don't deserve it, which is that same it's the same Victim vibration. Yeah, yeah, but I think that holds a lot of people back. Yeah. I'm afraid to want, although the want is there. Oh, I, one of the biggest questions that we get uh, for the stream is what's my purpose? Yeah. And the stream over and over again same says here. your purpose is to come and have a collection of experiences that expand your consciousness, make yeah. you a more sophisticated version of you. How you live that purpose is your preference. And we're told that we're supposed to have this grand singular thing, or if it's a career or being a parent or whatever it is, really, it's a collection of things. It's what, what's next? Absolutely. What am I going to allow to enter my experience next? And right. sometimes it takes something unraveling or being out in the wilderness to allow that to reveal itself, a new desire. But you're right. A lot of times people stop desiring, especially middle age. That Ooh. seems to be the moment of truth. People get to middle age. 
think of how on fire people are when they graduate high school or college or grad school. Right. There's nothing more hopeful and, and, uh, and positively knowing than a commencement speech in most cases. I'm going to set the world on fire. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to do this. When, you're, when you have youth on your side, it's, it's so much easier to believe that if you feel worthy. Right. And then for some people, they get out there and right away, it doesn't just click and they give up and they click, they, right. they kind of step down their expectations and right. they find themselves, in, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old, they've completely renegotiated all their dreams because they stopped believing in the things that were setting them on fire when they were younger. Right. And that's sad because I, I do see people get into uh, middle age is kind of our boot camp demographic. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. Although we've had people from the 20s all the way to 70s, but typically it's 45, 50, 55 years old, uh, get in and really reimagine their lives in there and start allowing themselves to dream again. And I love seeing that because when they do it, all of a sudden, all these new talents are emerging, these new desires are emerging. And the stream has said, all of us, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what we're capable of. Yeah, I love that. You hit on something too, though. When you first graduate from any program or you're in some areas of life, maybe we feel on fire because the path before us is clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just graduated law school. Now I'm going to be a lawyer. Now Mm -hmm. I'm clear. I don't have to worry about it. I've got society's validation that my big life is about to begin. Boom. Yeah. I'm not in the wilderness anymore. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and then ten years into that law career, sometimes they're that craving changes. the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're I want to throw in the towel and go back into the wilderness or do something really, really different with my life. Sure. Yes. And that's I applaud those people. I I uh, I have two siblings that are still one is mid forties and one is mid fifties, and still in the job they had in their twenties. And that's their thing. That's their experience. So that's, that's right for them. For me, the oddball middle child, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine that. I, I, I stuck myself in one field for 20 years and that was about 10 and a half years too long. <laughs> the first several years you. was great. And then I stuck myself in it because I was making more money year after year after year. Right. and thought there's no way out until right. I just left. And then here I am four years later, God, why was I thinking that ever? Right. Why, why did I think I needed a paycheck? Why did I think I needed security? I manifest my own abundance. I yeah. didn't need any of that and still don't. You know, it's actually interesting that you mentioned that the people that I became uh, associated with when I was practicing law, those last five years of my practice, they were born lawyers. They were amazing. They loved what they did. The money followed. They didn't yeah. work for paycheck. The money followed because they did different, but they were born lawyer. I mean, they loved, it's really what they wanted, how they wanted to express their soul, how their soul wanted to express their existence this time in life. And that was the juxtaposition I saw with me that were like, wow, this is not just a J-O-B. This is like, some people are born to be here. And if that's not what I'm doing, I already knew I was wasting my time being a lawyer, but I was also doing my clients a disservice. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a good skill to have in this world, no matter what, because it is, but I need the world go around clients like the 3d world different, different clients need me to show up differently. Yeah. And they need to talk about born lawyers. I just did a live with Paula kid Casey. Do you know her? She's the lawyer of attraction. I don't know if you've ever seen one. She's on here sometimes. Uh, in fact, the she's, name is she's, familiar. Yeah, she's on the podcast sometimes. And she, she did a live with me on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and she's done this before. She actually went through boot camp and she does the, um, she, she loves to talk to the stream. No one grills the stream. Like <laughs> She was a very successful divorce lawyer. And then she <laughs> finished that. And then she went on to start her podcast and her business around the lawyer of attraction. And it's a cool niche. It's a very cool niche. Because yeah. it's a blend of a very analytical mm-hmm. uh, mindset with something that is very not that, you know, very out there for a lot of people. And she brings those together. And I love that about her. And I love it when she is grilling the stream because she'll interrupt them, she'll <laughs> challenge them, and the stream doesn't get offended. Of and there are people that are like, I can't believe she spoke like that to the no. stream. But I'm yeah. like, the stream doesn't care. No. Can cha- she can challenge, she can disagree. 
And she brings so much richness from the stream and her interrogation style. Well, it's interesting you bring that up because that's how I do mediumship. <laughs> now, well, you're, people... you're still the only person that's ever given a psychic medium reading to the stream, which was <laughs> <Yeah>. really cool. <laughs> you're thinking this, and this is what we're going to talk about next. Yeah, that was no, a very, very cool interaction because the, the synergy and that was just off the charts. Yeah, it is. we'll have to do that. We'll have to have you back and do that again. Definitely. Uh, that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I love people... this topic, though, of, of really just not demonize not demonizing anything first of all i think we demonize everything in this world and not demonize these things that we consider negative emotion right because they're not really negative nothing is really negative everything is really positive because <laughs> even the things that we consider negative are there to inspire positive evolution they're working for us they're yeah. working so fear, fear is a driver like, of that for sure and that's a good reminder on the show because we don't go there enough yeah i always say in this is might be inflammatory language but i always say the devil is the hardest working person <laughs> devil is the hardest working thing on this planet and because i do believe those negative emotions they're working to push us and move us and move yeah. us toward well, it's funny that you said that because i i wrote an article and i wrote it before halloween but we ended up getting it published after halloween uh and the title of the article is who knew satan was the good guy after all and he's course, the hardest working well, the, the, it, was, it was the fact that how much war and yeah. how much destruction has taken place in the name of battling Satan. Right. And then when you look at well, what has Satan really done to the world, really done to the world, every is a scapegoat for everything, right? That yes. image, the Satan, yes. the devil, whatever you call right. it, it's a scapegoat for egocentric bad behavior. Right. Right. <laughs> and that, that's what Satan is. But look at how what the, the ones that label themselves good sometimes, especially certain churches, certain religions, battling the devil, battling demons, battling Satan, battle, 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 never goes away. The battle never ends. Yeah. And how much destruction takes place in the name of battling evil. Yeah. That, to, to me, when you are controlling and abusing and killing people in the name of anything, right? Where's your priority there? Right. And it's always, it's all of that is always rooted in the fear part of ego, right. where people have gotten into fear. And instead of allowing the fear to be the catalyst to new positive creation, let's go down the fear path a little deeper. And then let's go hurt a bunch of people to get our point. Yeah. across. Well, that's the, that's the key, right? When you start using that energy to judge and blame other people, which that's one of the very first things you said when we started, fear turns into judgment. And then we start judging. Oh, well, let's go back to that second night of the Dracula event. Oh, maybe the audience is off this night. Maybe this is wrong. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe this is wrong. Nothing was wrong but me, and I was exhausted in my anxiety. But when yeah, we you dipped get, into judging it, and you you you, you taught yourself it. that you never needed to judge it in the first place. Right. Well, and next time you're you're evolved in that now. Right. So you can hearken back to that next time and realize that wow, this fear is here to motivate me to go out and, and really crush it. Which or have whatever way, experience I have, and it's all going to work out great. Yeah. I, unfortunately, I'm a slow learner because <laughs> I've had this experience more than once in my we life. We all do that. You know, <laughs> I, I talked about that marketing thing. You know, I've gone through the marketing <laughs> rounds a few times with a few different people. It never really worked. And when I don't market, everything works great. When you do you. Yeah. When, I, when we just do our thing and say, here it is, world. Here's the tie of practice. Here's all you need to know about it. And if you're guided to, to right. do something with us, great. And if you're not, we're happy to share it with you. Right. That's, that's the highest vibe I can imagine. Yes. And that's what I'm here for. Agreed. Agreed. This has been an amazing conversation as always. I love oh, it's having been you so on fun, so much. David. Always. And, and, uh, we, we need to do another uh, psychic reading, not really a psychic reading of the stream, but definitely have you back on yep. uh, to chat with them. And we can maybe regroup on all this with the stream soon. I would love that. So tell them where to find you andreasaintamon.com all spelled out a-n-d-r-e-a s-a-i-n-t-a-m-a-n-d.com very good and we'll have your uh, link in the show notes as well thank you thank you andrea always fantastic to have you on i'm excited to announce that we are now on patreon so check us out at patreon.com forward slash the stream of david